We're in an instant gratification society. We are used to things being done quickly and instantaneously, and I think that has translated somehow to people's expectations of road service. They want things done immediately. The story of road salt begins around the end of World War II. Detroit, Michigan was the first to begin widespread use of the substance as a de-icer. This was due to the state's sprawling road and highway systems, a result of the auto boom, as well as the city's proximity to one of North America's largest salt mines right beneath it. Within the next two decades, road salt would come into use across the country. Up until then, bad weather meant staying indoors, but with road salt and other technological advancements came a perception of control over the environment, a maintained state of commerce and public safety, despite weather conditions. In the United States, we have now gone from spreading approximately 4 million tons of road salt in 1964 to over 17 million tons today. Our highways must be kept open. Predominantly for the safety of the traveling public. Furthermore, it, it helps from an economic standpoint to, to keep commerce and, and people moving. Number one priority is safety, the safety of the people who use the roads. And the second is making sure that our roads are functional and passable. Essentially, salt is the most efficient and economical de-icing product that we have right now. We know that road salt, certainly to some extent, it'll get into the roadside environment, into the soil. It can have a detrimental effect on plants in the roadside environment. We, we know that there is salt runoff from the roads. That's, you know, that's a given because we use rock salt. It is not good for vegetation. The trees are dying you know, near the freeways where there's a lot of salt. Uh, so it certainly has an impact. While agencies like MDOT and the Road Commission for Oakland County are aware of some of the dangers posed by road salt, local scientists are learning more about the long-term impacts that it has on freshwater ecosystems. One of the things I think that makes the most harmful in the environment is the fact that it dissolves very readily. It's applied as a solid, mixes with snow that melts or rains, and it dissolves. And so that component makes it very mobile. So then it can travel very easily through the sediment, into the waterways, into rivers, streams, and lakes, into wetlands, and then also into groundwater. Well, I think the concern is that there's no real easy way of removing this contaminant from the fresh water. So there can be a long-term impact that's just dependent on, say, natural processes from removing it. It's not very practical for us to actually have to clean the lake water. So we've already started seeing shifts in a more freshwater-dominated algae system to slightly more saltwater-tolerant algae species. And in looking up impacts on fish, there really isn't tons of information out there. Certainly, if you change the salinity of the water, it's going to affect aquatic organisms to a great extent. It could be a direct effect on their physiology or by affecting their environment in indirect ways. You have in the Great Lakes a lot of fish that actually are invasive. You have um, smelt gobies, lamprey, and those fish actually originated from saltwater systems. So those invasive species that have come in actually have a much greater range of tolerance to salt than our native fish. So I think the impact may be, one, we impact the algae, so that's what? the invertebrates eat and the fish eat the invertebrates. So you get those food level effects. Then you have invasive species that can handle the salt better than the native species. So giving potentially those invasive species a greater edge because they have a greater range of being tolerant to salt. Beyond the acute effects road salt has on native organisms, the ecosystem as a whole is becoming less hospitable to aquatic life. Normally in spring and summer, when you have a temperature change, lakes flip. And the flipping is incredibly important because it takes the nutrients that have collected from dead and decaying things on the bottom and gives it to the things on top. And then the top water is oxygenated a lot better. So then the oxygen moves to that bottom waters. When the salt comes into the lake, it's heavier. Well, if that water sitting at the bottom is heavy, 
it's gonna be very hard to flip that lake. And with that, you don't get nutrients to the surface, you don't get oxygen at the bottom, and the entire ecosystem of the lake is severely damaged when you have that happen. As we keep using roads for transportation, we're gonna to have to keep repairing them, and we're gonna to have to keep using some kind of de-icer to be safe so we don't you know, have collisions when they get iced over. I don't believe Michigan can eliminate the need to use de-icing because right now there are no other economic alternatives that we can go to. Again, it's finding that balance uh, between the, the financial side and you know the environmental side. And I think with road salt, the effects may be the entire degradation of the system. The, the system becomes weaker. Detroit has a long history of this, you know, idea of independent transportation, and it's very convenient, but um, we have to think about what we're doing to the planet. Emerging research is working to balance the benefits of road salt with the growing understanding of its negative environmental impact. Further evaluation is critical in finding a sustainable alternative. Perhaps Detroit, which pioneered the use of road salt, can spark a new conversation about the necessity of de-icing while also protecting the largest freshwater system in the world, the Great Lakes.